Imagine you are 21. Perhaps you're lucky enough to know exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. But if you're anything like me, the only thing you really feel you know how to do properly is make migraine noodles. <laughs> what I really want to be is a writer, but that seems impossible. There are instructions on the back of a noodle packet, but there are no instructions for how to make a writer. Then I hear on a science podcast that the only reason we have a sense of self is our ability to create narrative. This makes sense to me. Stories are the most important thing in my life. They're my memories, they're how I imagine the future, they're what distinguishes strangers from the people I love. I decide I have to become a writer, and the only way to do it is to write all the time. Surely if I do it every day, I'll pick up a few things. So I do a test run. I write 24 hours for 24 hours live at the National Young Writers Festival, asking people to send in their prompts. I pitch it as extreme writing. I want to be the Bear grills of the literary world. <laughs> It's a huge rush, and straight off the back of that, I start designing the 365-day challenge. I'm going to write one story every day for a year. Um, but like New Year's resolutions or flossing, I'm worried that I'm not actually going to keep it up. <laughs> and so I need someone to enforce the challenge. So I tell the internet what I'm doing, because that thing never sleeps. And then I write, on Christmas, on my birthday, at a wedding in India, with a high fever, at Ikea, atop a waterfall, in the front row of gigs, at Woolies, and even up a tree. Some days I love it, other days I mash my face into the keyboard, but I never give up. Sorry. And this is where I learn my first big lesson that rules and challenges are really useful for inspiration. It sounds counterintuitive, but I have been writing for 246 days now, and I never worry about running out of inspiration anymore. And the rules are forcing me to do things that I never would have done before. I carve words into candles, scratch them onto seed pods, write poetry on people's hands, and trace words in the sand after facing my fear of swimming in the ocean. I leave my stories in libraries, on cars, and in sushi trains. I eat my words on toast, I read them in the mirror, and I even set them free on paper aeroplanes. Someone even sends me their real diary entry and a pack of found photos as inspiration. And there's something else happening too. I'm making connections with loads of really interesting people. Some of them are strangers off the street, and other people are incredible writers and mentors from London to Australia, who I previously considered mysterious, out-of-reach creatures. On day 58, someone asked me to write a story and send it to a stranger's letterbox. I immediately start thinking about this house, who, which is a few streets away, and it has this fence made of knobbly old tree branches. Even though it's grey and gnarled, there's something alive about it, and I'm fascinated. Every time I drive past, I have to crane my neck to get a better look. So I quickly write a story inspired by the said fence, and I drive over to drop it off. I can hear that there's people there, so I try to do it as quickly as possible. <laughs> when I get home, it's been totally thrilling, and I just can't sleep. I keep wondering if they've seen it. 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., there's still no word from them. But just before I go to bed, and I'm just about to give up on the whole thing, I decide to check my Facebook one last time. I doubt that they'd send a message in the middle of the night, but there it is. We just received your beautiful letter. My partner always has this strange <laughs> habit of checking the mailbox at odd hours of the night, even though it's always been delivered. Now it seems his search of the empty letterbox has been fruitful. <laughs> the next morning, I get this picture of them. It turns out that the lady who lives there is an artist who's transforming the house into a gallery. And about a month or so later, I'm sitting in the house that's fascinated me for so long, writing a story at her exhibition. And this is where I learned my second big lesson, that inspiration is sparked by others. Writing doesn't have to be about locking yourself away and growing a crazy beard. <laughs> my project has been as much about people as it has been about writing. And asking strangers to collaborate with me is risky and nerve-wracking, but they nearly always respond in a generous and exciting way which I can't anticipate. And 
the more I make these connections, the more connections I seem to attract. On day three, I write a story inspired by a Teddy talk. Um, on day 20, 129, rather, I write a story inspired by a stranger called Haley Bartholomew. Today, I'm giving a TEDx talk alongside Haley Bartholomew. And stories are still the most important thing in my life. I haven't gotten sick of them. And this has led me to believe that if there's something you think is important, whether it be science, painting, cooking, whatever it is, the most important thing to do is do it whenever you can, wherever you can, for whoever you think will enjoy it most. And perhaps this won't always be in a lab or for a gallery or tasted by a foodie. Perhaps the person that's going to enjoy it most is your idol who inspired you, or the person sitting next to you right now, or the strangers in the park. Uh, today is day 246, and um, I've been writing for two, uh, sorry, and uh, I only have three months of my challenge to go, or 120 stories. And I really want to share some of my imagination with you here live today, but you're going to have to share some of yours too. When I was little, I loved to make up words, for example, fingo, which meant to stomp, which is why I really want to write today's story in a new language, one that you're going to make up. I'm challenging you to think of a new word, write it down alongside its definition, and then pin it to the board during morning tea, which we're just about to have. Then I'm going to take as many of those words as possible and weave them into a story. Together, we're going to imagine a TEDx QT dictionary which I'll make available at the end of the day, alongside my story. And this is where my talk ends, but my extreme writing adventure continues. I hope you'll join me, but for now, it's time for my finale fingo from the stage. <laughs>